family. family. My name is Nick. And I'm Joni. And we've been blessed to be part of a family small group this season. As you know, many of you know, we've been reading through Ed Walsh's Caring for One Another, and this study could honestly not have come at a better time. It's been a crazy season for all of us, trying to adjust to a new online format for small groups, and you know, we definitely miss seeing all of you in person. But we are honestly just so thankful for the church leadership and the many ways they've been encouraging us to stay connected, especially through small groups. So for me, one of the ways and one of the unique blessings of small groups has been getting to know people kind of outside of our own life stage, including, you know, singles, engaged, married, parents. And before joining a small group, it was tempting for us to kind of just be sticking to our own social bubbles and communities. So it's been a good challenge to kind of branch out from that and to learn to be able to get to know others from a different life stage. For example, although I'm not a parent myself, it's been you know, so encouraging to hear how so many faithful fathers have been challenged to die to their own sins every day by really just sacrificially serving their families. I'm thankful for you know, many godly men who have told me what I needed to hear rather than simply just what I wanted to hear. And it really puts 1 Thessalonians 5.11 really into practice. You know, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. For me, it's been so great getting to know so many different types of people at the small group, but it's also been a big change because everything is now online. But caring for one another has been an encouragement for both of us to find ways to serve others during the time of online church and social distancing, especially through really great examples from our small group and other brothers and sisters who have served us as well. Um, some ways that we've been able to serve other people at church and lighthouse have been making weekend trips to drop by um, their houses and drop off some boba and even if the conversations are like five to ten minutes and they're super short it's still been a really great way to serve others another way we've been able to serve others is by pouring into communities that we have been already part of such as uh, children's ministry beacon or praxis a practical way that I feel like anyone at church could serve others is by reaching out to their friends, new people, and asking how they're really doing in prayer requests they have. This is such a unique season because there's a worldwide pandemic going on and we're all through going through this struggle together, but each struggle a person has is unique to their own life and with that comes their own challenges and experience that they're going through this season. One verse that I've been meditating on is Romans 12, 15 that, that says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. I have found that it could be oh, so easy to be caught up in my own life and my own struggles and own issues that I forget that other people are going through rough times too and major changes in their lives. And I have learned that I need to become less self-centered and more people-centered because that is what Jesus has demonstrated towards me and therefore called me to do. Uh, something that we both, you know, have been super encouraged by um, has actually been the vulnerability and openness in our own small group. So going through, you know, this current season, we were a little bit unsure what vulnerability would look like since we are all online. But, you know, since the theme of this whole season, again, has been caring for one another, we've been just honestly so thankful for our small group leaders who had the idea to share testimonies each week. And so seeing God's grace, you know, firsthand, really, in the lives of people has honestly been the greatest blessing. We've seen how the Lord can work through brokenness, how he's uh, called out to the lost sheep, and how, you know, we've all been learning so much through other people's experiences. Hearing testimonies has truly been such a gift, and it's kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. And so thank you so much, Lighthouse, for your constant care for us. I know I speak on behalf of everyone when we say we've just been, you know, so blessed by the intentionality and the love that you've shown us. Thank you, honestly, just so much for the fellowship, the laughs, the tears even, and all the memories that we've had from small groups. So even if we can't see everyone in person, you are all in our prayers, and we trust that the Lord's sovereign plan uh, is being carried out. So thanks, everyone, and we hope to see you soon. Bye.
So one way our small group has learned to love one another is by sharing tacos. So here we are sharing tacos together. Yeah. Woo! Here we go. Tacos El Goloso. Yep. What are those? Brownies. And the brownies are ready. <laughs> so we made brownies and got boba for Steph and Randy. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.